Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at Argand diagrams so we can answer questions from exercise 2a. So what is an Argand diagram? Well an Argand diagram is how we represent complex numbers on a number line. Now you can imagine the normal number line just goes from negative numbers up to positive numbers so how do we integrate in complex numbers? Well, what we effectively do is we create a second um, dimension for these complex numbers. You can think of it as the y-axis or the vertical axis. So these are described on what we call a Cartesian set of axes. Um, effectively, the real part of your number is going to go from left to right. The imaginary part of your number is going to go up and down. So let's have a look at how we would plot 2 plus 5i on a number line or effectively what we're going to call now an Argand diagram in two dimensions. We'll have a go at plotting these three complex numbers. So this is how it works. We go from left to right on the real part of the number, the 2, the 3 or the minus 4, and we go up and down for the 5, minus 4, 1 on the imaginary part of the axis. So this is how we effectively represent complex numbers on a number line. So 2 plus 5i, you'll obviously go 2 to the right and 5 up. Effectively, it's the same as the coordinate 2, 5. You can think of it like that as well. You plot your point here, put a little cross on the lines and call it z1. For 3 minus 4i, you obviously go 3 to the right and 4 down this time because it's obviously a minus 4. You could think of this as 3 minus 4 as a coordinate. And for minus 4 plus i, you'll obviously go right by 4 and up by 1. You can think of this as the coordinate 4, 1 um, as a, a coordinate. Plot the coordinate and put a z3 next to it so you don't lose track of which complex number is which one. Okay. So on top of this, we introduce the word magnitude. So find the magnitude of O, A. Now, O... You'll be familiar with this from GCSE. O is always the origin coordinate, the centre point zero, zero. Uh, so going back to this, find the magnitude of OA, OB, OC, um, where these are representing the points on the Argand diagram. Now the way that we would do this, the magnitude of the complex number is effectively the straight line distance between the origin and z1. So what is this distance from here to here? It's effectively the same problem as working out the distance between two coordinates. You put in a little bit of Pythagoras' theorem and you can then do 2 squared plus 5 squared and you get the square root of 29. So that would be the magnitude of z1. Second coordinate would be this one down here, z2. So draw a line from 0 to z2, and that will help you find the magnitude of z2, the straight line distance between the origin and the coordinate. So think of this as a problem of finding the difference between, finding the distance between two coordinates. 3 and 4. Now, although we're going down by 4, it's a distance. So we're only going to use the number 4 in here. We don't need to put a negative in this position here. It's just the value 4. So 3 squared plus 4 squared, and we get 5. And very similarly for z3, draw a line between 0 to z3, work out the distance between these two coordinates, and that will help you find the magnitude of that coordinate. So that would be the square root of 17. Okay, so that's all we need to do for plotting uh, coordinates or complex numbers on Argand diagrams. Let's have a go at another question here. Z1, Z2, and we need to plot the uh, position of Z1 plus Z2 as well. So let's just work that out first. So 7 plus 4i, add your real parts, add your imaginary parts. And now let's plot these on a, a coordinate system. So uh, Z1 is 4 plus i, so 4 to the right, 1 up. Z2 is 3 to the right and 3 up. And 7 plus 4i is 7 to the right and 4 up. So we get Z1 plus Z2 here. Now, interestingly enough, if we look at these two coordinates here as vectors, if you were to do Z1 
and then followed by z2 as a vector straight afterwards, straight after doing z1, you effectively get the same vector as doing z1 plus z2. So you can effectively think of um, complex numbers that are represented on an argon diagram as vectors if you add the two vectors together. So if we're doing z1 plus z2, you can think of it as move right by 4 and 1 up, and then followed by the vector move 3 to the right and 3 up, and you'll get to the vector of z1 plus z2, or the complex number z1 plus z2. Okay, very similar question here then. Show z1, z2, and z1 minus z2 on an argon diagram here. So let's first work out what z1 minus z2 is. So take the real parts away and the imaginary parts away. And we get minus 2 plus 3i. And plotting these on an argon diagram, we get this situation here. So we've got 2 plus 5i up here, 4 plus 2i over here, and minus 2 plus 3i over here. And as with adding the vectors together, it's the same with taking the vectors away from each other. So if we've got this vector here, then what we can then do is to go back along the... Um, vector of z2 because it's a negative in our uh, complex numbers. So we're going backwards that way and that will end up at z1 minus z2. Okay, so you can still think of these as um, vectors uh, when there's a plus in there or where there's a negative in there. The vector z1 minus z2 is still a diagram um, of a parallelogram. Okay. All right, then. so yeah, so we've got this parallelogram appear here. Um, yeah, so if you want to go backwards along Z2, you just got to take away Z2 um, as, as a complex number. All right, then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here, then. Pause the video and try them out. All right then, so hopefully this is not too tricky for you then. All we have to do is draw out a complex number diagram, an argon diagram. I would suggest labelling the axes with real and imaginary or some abbreviations like that. And then it's seven along, two up. And after you've done that, just label your complex number so you know where it goes. The second one, roughly the same. Hopefully this is fairly straightforward um, by now. Z1 is 11 plus 2i, so 11 along 2i up. Always trying to get these things to scale, even if you haven't um, plotted the, the, um, the axes. And then 2 plus 4i, so it's going to be twice as high up here. 2 plus 4i is going to be down up there. And then if we add them together, Z1 plus Z2 is going to be 11 plus 2 is 13, and 2 plus 4 is 6, so it's 6i. So this is going to be at 13 plus 6i, which is all the way up here. So effectively what we could say here is that this vector inside here is the same as this vector inside here, because it is the vector of moving 2 to the right and 4 up. We've just changed the position here, like that. All right then, so that's all we have to do with argand diagrams. Then remember, we've got to also be able to find the modulus of a complex number. So that's just a little bit of Pythagoras theorem there. All right then, so hopefully that was fairly straightforward. Have a go at questions from exercise 2a and uh, then move on to the next part. Thanks for watching.